If you're in the market for investment-worthy bags, watches, and fine jewelry, Rebag is the answer. Rebag is a luxury resale marketplace where each piece is carefully vetted and verified by experts to ensure quality and authenticity. If you're in the market, use Rebag to buy and sell finds from the world's top brands, including Hermes, Chanel, and Cartier. Head to Rebag.com to get 10% off your first purchase with code REBAG10. Shop today at Rebag.com. That's R-E-B-A-G.com. And use promo code REBAG10 for 10% off your first purchase. This is GoPowerCat.com publisher Tim Fitzgerald. Thank you for listening to this PowerCat podcast. Make sure you never miss an episode of the PowerCat podcast by subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, or your favorite podcast network. And if you enjoy this podcast, please consider becoming a subscriber to GoPowerCat.com. We cover the Wildcats like no one else with our VIP customers enjoying one-of-a-kind coverage from our team of professional journalists. And sign up today for an annual subscription to GPC and grab a 30% discount on your first year. And now here's the PowerCat Podcast. The following is a GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street production. You've discovered your link to GoPowerCat.com's PowerCat Insiders Podcast, presented by Commerce Bank, and it starts right now. Now, let's go to the WTC Gig Powered Studios. Here's your host, GoPowerCat.com publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to another edition of the PowerCat Insiders Podcast presented by Commerce Bank, Kansas State, coming off a 26-13 defeat at Oklahoma State. And the Wildcats have fallen out of the national polls, and deservingly so, as they went through a lethargic effort in Stillwater. That was not easy for me to say. A lethargic effort. I should be familiar with lethargic efforts. It's something I do quite a bit. And in fact, all three of you were there. I am joined by Ryan Black to my left of the Manhattan Mercury, Kellis Robinette of the Wichita Eagle across from me. And I don't know why I'm saying where everyone is because it's a podcast, but Matt Walters is to my right. And of course, he is of the Kansas State Radio Network on the sidelines pre and post game. He never stops talking. Oh, yeah, I do. And he uh, is actually with us this week. Welcome back, partner. Good to be back. Sorry, duty called last week. Yeah, that's fine. Took that's longer fine. than expected. Uh, the, the problem wasn't not having you. The problem was uh, one of our friends from the Manhattan Running Company, who do, does their podcast in our studio, great guys, uh, accidentally I picked snagged up. Snagged the reeds. Yeah, so uh, the reeds were about you last week. I'll go, ahead, I'll go ahead and knock one out. Do it. Is that all right? It'll be better than what we did last week. Whatever financial challenges come your way, Commerce Bank can help. Commerce Bank, challenge accepted. Well, let's start at this. uh, Oklahoma State, challenge not accepted. Guys, uh, I watched it on ESPN+, Plus, so I don't really know what happened. That's a whole other topic I will get into. But uh, let's start with you, Kellis. Your immediate thoughts on what K-State looked like from the very get-go in that contest. Now, they look bad, really. I mean, <laughs> and that's it for this week's Insiders yeah. Pocket. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't blame anybody for jumping off the bandwagon. I mean, before the game, you were looking at the schedule and saying, boy, you win this one. You know, Baylor and TC are up next. You'd be 6-0, and bring on Oklahoma. And now after that, you're thinking, well, now Baylor looks pretty tough. TCU looks pretty tough. So, I mean, I, I don't know. Um, that's not definitely not what you wanted to see because everybody wanted to know how is this team going to respond to a real Big 12 test they hadn't faced the spread yet before and they got eaten alive by it so they didn't respond at all they i thought they did really good just to keep it 26 13 it felt like more of a 45 to 10 game yeah that's honestly. my question for you ryan closest blowout you probably ever covered uh, it's up there you know what's funny is that the game that we saw saturday is the game that i thought we would see two years ago when they went down there and were the 21 22 point underdogs yeah. Because it just, you know, it, like Kella said, it just the the final score is not indicative of how much Oklahoma State thoroughly dominated that game. Now, what surprised you the most about that performance? I figured in case they would be able to run the ball uh, me too. on Oklahoma State, and uh, I think the fact that Oklahoma State missed two offensive linemen, one of them being Tevin Jenkins, the Topeka High product, and they really didn't miss a beat. Um, I thought case they would be able to do more to them defensively. I thought if the the front four, occasionally the you know front six, front seven, if they could get a little pressure and, and do some things that way, um, 
they have some success. It just it didn't translate. They had moderate success. Wyatt Hubert right. was disruptive at times. But you can't have those penalties. No. That's something that's got to get eliminated. You know, everything we thought we knew about this team went out the window in this game. They generally play clean football, uh, you know, and they had their first offensive turnover, and it was huge. They are pretty limited in penalties. They don't make a bunch of mental mistakes. And most importantly, the offensive line are dominant badasses that will blow the other team off the ball. And they didn't do that against an Oklahoma State defense that is not known to be run stoppers. I understand that Oklahoma State changed their schemes. It changed some personnel. But my goodness, they K-State didn't adapt to anything till later in the second half, did they, Kels? Now, the, the two things that I guess I took away most from the game were players saying that Oklahoma State legitimately surprised them with scheme. Like James Gilbert, Dalton Schoen, Skyler Thompson all said that, that they were just borderline shocked that they came out and were doing some of the things they were doing, and it threw them off early. And then secondly, just how limited they were passing. I mean, I, I knew without Malik Knowles they would probably take a step back, but, I mean, they really had no passing game at all without him. And maybe that's why they couldn't run the ball. Maybe Oklahoma State just made it so difficult they couldn't. I still thought they would be able to average more than 3.9 yards a rush, though given how well they, they ran the ball in the first three games. Yeah, and I thought the one thing that was probably going to work, they seemed reluctant to do, and we saw a little bit of it, but not enough. And I know you don't want to use Skylar Thompson as a batting ram, Matt. Quarterback but, run. But if you yeah, can't get open, run off that secondary deep and open up uh, you know, some quarterback runs. It just seems like it was like we told you we're not going to run you like Coach Snyder did, so we're not going to do it. And they just abandoned what probably would have worked. And I think that maybe we're going to see more of it or not. He hasn't helped himself a lot, but that's something that John Holcomb can do. Right. But you can't put the snap on the turf. You've got to. They use two timeouts every time he came yeah, onto the field. What the heck? He's He's got to get some things figured out. He can really help this football team. I think um, I think it's on him in, in some regards, but um, – you know, K-State had – there were a couple of drop passes that shouldn't have been dropped, but, you know, I'm like, hell, it's the – Oklahoma State just snuffed out the passing attack. Their corner, their corners are good. They're not the best oh. corners in the country, but they're pretty good, and K-State could not get open out on the edge. And it wasn't a good day from Skyler. He, he didn't look comfortable. It was the first time he looked like – Skyler of last season with his confidence shaken, bad body language. It just wasn't his night. No, that's that's exactly what I was about to say, Fitz, was that, I mean, literally word for word, I was going to say he didn't look comfortable and he looked a lot more like the quarterback last year who was very unsure of himself. Of course, not, not the same exact circumstances in that knowing that he wasn't going to get pulled like last year in, in favor of a guy like Alex Delton, but just n nothing at all to me uh, from Skyler. He, he did not look at all like the same player from, from the first three games of this season in, in any facet not just how he played but like the body language too wasn't there well I'll say this you learn something from losses and Skyler and the coaches learned something about him he has a bad habit kill us of fleeing to his right and okay. yeah. and not stepping up into the pocket and actually stepping around where they can get to him easier it happened over and over and in fact he got so obsessed with it he missed Landry Weber on an easy first down throw instead to run it out of bounds it was disturbing yeah, and he really wasn't pressured on a lot of no. the real outs that he had. Um, I'm hesitant to be too harsh on him. I do remember the play you're talking about where he should have thrown to Weber. I believe there was also a fourth down where he had – maybe it was – he had somebody short, and he went long to the guy who was covered when – Oh, down he, the sideline. Yeah, if he, if he would have just gone short on the out route, it probably would have been picked up. But otherwise, I didn't see a whole lot of guys getting open, so I don't know how much you can just say, boy, the quarterback played poorly. But at the same no, time, that – when the other team's bring bringing just three guys and there's not a lot of pressure on you, there's not there's no need to scramble as much as he did. I think he felt like he had to carry more luggage mm -hmm. than he did. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, he put too much on himself instead of letting things just kind of come to him and re calmly read a defense. Um, but man, they've got to lean on that running game. And Matt, they threw the ball in the first play. It's like 
Run was second in this contest, and I didn't quite grasp what they were trying to accomplish. And the blocking scheme seemed different. It just they were dysfunctional in the running game until late. Again, I figured K State would be able to run the ball better. I thought we would see that from the get go. Even though Oklahoma State, Kellis, Ryan, you, everybody knew that. Oklahoma State was probably going to load up the box with sure. seven, eight, nine guys, and I still expected K State to be able to to handle that. They they threw the ball more early than I expected they would, and when things weren't weren't going quite right in the passing game, that's when I thought they would lean more on the ground attack. And I, and I will say this: it, it every bit of felt like. A forty to nothing type game as opposed to twenty six thirteen. Oh, it did. It felt like an absolute blowout. I've I've seen many a K State game where they go into the fourth quarter down by like ten, thirteen, and you're thinking, Oh, they're still in striking range, you know? And I still kind of thought that, but I'm like but they need to change a lot about their not just play calling and execution, but their whole demeanor was like we're defeated. And it was so strange after watching Mississippi State when they were persistent. They had great body language. And it just – you were at the game, Ryan, it, on TV, what I could see. It just looked like the sideline was moping around. Yeah, I mean, I think, again, I think they were a little bit shell-shocked in that, like Kellis has mentioned multiple times, they just were so flummoxed by what – Oklahoma State threw at them that they they weren't expecting it and I think they were just like well this is not how we at all expected this game to go you you know one thing I want to just ask you guys and I'm not trying to uh, although of course Riley joked last week that hey if if you can't make these bold proclamations and jump to conclusions quickly over nothing what are we doing as as journalists on a podcast but do you think Saturday without Knowles is that is that the first time we really saw the absence of Hunter Risen and, and Isaiah Zuber really oh. showing up at all. And just in terms of, of yeah. guys, not that, that, that Dalton Schoen and the other guys on the team are not very good receivers, but they're just not many game breakers. And, and they haven't really used Josh Youngblood in the passing game much yet. He, he had a reverse that picked up, I think, 13 yards. But I'm just saying that the K-State, maybe outside of Knowles and uh, – you know, Joaquin Gill, they don't really have any receiver you just point to and say, that guy's going to torch a secondary. And I don't know, do you think Saturday was the first time we really saw that come to the fore because they had, had to get, lean on the passing game the first three games? Well, it's it's scary to think about because I don't think uh, Knowles is playing this week. And without him, you got Weber, Langey Weber, former walk-on, Dalton Schoen, former walk-on, Joaquin Gill, former walk-on, Phillip Brooks, former walk-on. Oh, Lord, I didn't think that. <laughs> That's four of your top six receivers. Trebash I mean, Taylor. Not, yeah, Taylor scholarship and then Youngblood scholarship. Scholar- he's freshman. Yep, true freshman. Um, I, mean, I mean, hey, they're all great guys. I wish them the best. But, yeah, no defense is looking at that receiving core and saying, like, oh, no, no, yeah. no, we got we to gotta leave guys in coverage. And I know some people want to say, well, Ryan, come on, why are you going to bring up Zuber after his drop? But I'm just saying, hey, I mean, he was still K-State's leading receiver yeah. in every category last year, so What's, let's not just completely kill the guy. It's fair to say that on the day Chris Kleiman was hired, they played Saturday with three of without three of the top four guys you would have expected yes. to be on the field at receiver, 100%. Dalton Schoen being the fourth. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as much as we all love Dalton, he is what he is. He's he's the possession type guy mm-hmm. who has adequate speed, but has clearly can't typically run away from guys unless, you know, he's got other threats on the field. If you put a better corner on him, he's, he's going to have problems, and I, I get that. They've got to find someone, though, Matt. I don't know where they're going to find him. If, if that means more schemes for Youngblood, mm-hmm. if that means Chris Heron at receiver, although he's not, I don't think, a burner, if that's John Holcomb playing at receiver, which they've been messing around with, but if he can't get the right plays run as a quarterback, I wouldn't trust him at receiver. This is a real problem. Shabaston Taylor, it is go time. Yeah. It's time to click. And he's That's the one guy that, to me, has really got to take a step up. Yeah. And, you know, for me – the the receiving core once K State got to Mississippi State, and then once Big Twelve play arrived, that was the area that I thought that's where the biggest test is going to come. Not O line, not D line, not linebackers. Secondary, yeah, probably number two, but not running backs. No, K State's wide receivers. Mm-hmm. And what what Saturday night tells me is whether it's Baylor, whether it's KU, doesn't matter who it is, get ready because you're going to see eight, nine guys in the box straight time. 
until Malik Knowles comes back or until whether it's Holcomb or Shabaston Taylor or one of those guys does something. And I'm fine with that. Go heavy and one wide. Say, hey, you want to put eight and nine in the box? That's We're going to put ten in the box back at you and, and run plays. I, I really wouldn't be surprised, just given their willingness to play so many freshmen so far, if we don't see Josh Youngblood a lot more going forward, especially until Knowles gets back. Something's got to happen. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, I'm just interested to see what new schemes they come up. Yeah, exactly. From you, you have to, you just have to be more creative. That's really the the answer. And I said this on Saturday night on, during the broadcast on the network is we were so accustomed to Bill Snyder's playbook is as tall as it is from floor to ceiling here in this studio. Well, we have seen just a couple of sheets of the Chris Kleiman, mm-hmm. Courtney Messingham playbook. It's going to, I don't think creativity is the right word, but they're going to have to find some other avenues and, and do so quickly with, I guess, I don't know if you want to say predicament, but with the, the state that they're in, uh, they're going to have to do some different things. I'm with Kellis. This, for me, there's only so many answers you can find personnel wise for their, their struggles. They are what they are. We knew this coming in that they had a good front line of guys, you know, that could get by, but you get into injuries, they're going to run out of bodies pretty quickly. We've all been saying that since the start. It just took one injury at receiver, the right injury, to make it a lot more difficult. But it just strikes me schematically, you can get guys open. You know, should and, be able to. And, and they really didn't throw enough to the tight ends and running backs in my book. Receivers are struggling. Granted, I mean, Jordan Brown had a huge drop. Uh, but Sammy Wheeler, I think, had a nice reception. We weren't sure watching ESPN+. Plus. <laughs> he did. It yeah. happened. First play, out of the, first play out of the lightning delay. Yeah, yeah and apparently uh, ESPN's policy is not cover the game after <laughs> lightning delays. Can I, can I backtrack yeah. a quick second? Sure, I didn't listen last week just because of – uh, Good. What We're I had. glad you didn't. Were you, yeah. were, were you surprised that K State was ranked last week? No, 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 no. Uh, just no. because, because uh, they they were compared to everyone else. You know, like Barry Trammell's somewhat ridiculous based on uh, games played rankings. They had one of the better wins in college football. So yeah, I mean Barry had him tenth in the country just because it was. Everyone starting at zero at the start of the season. What have you done for me this season? Right. Rankings. I have no problem with doing that. I just think three games into the season is too early. They didn't belong at 10. I think they belonged at 22 to 24, and now they belong on the outside. But they can win their way back in with a couple wins pretty easily. Well, and, and I wasn't surprised either because you have to remember, I mean, they beat uh, Mississippi State, who was low in the rankings. TCU got beat. They were number 25 to SMU. Yeah. And I believe K-State had been the top-ranked team and all receiving so i just thought well hey there's really no reason they shouldn't be ranked after after the win at mississippi state but i guess i'm i'm looking at it from a, a different avenue i thought it was still receiving votes that's where going into the yeah. oklahoma state game that's where k-state should have been oh 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 okay. oh you're just saying like your personal opinion if you were still ranking them right that's okay. had i i would have had no problem with that had yeah. i been a voter i just hadn't seen enough i yeah right yeah. I, three I and oh great I, but I was not blown away with Mississippi State. No, I wasn't I, either. I think a lot of I think they got a little benefit of the doubt because they're you know SEC team mm-hmm. and people mm-hmm. bumped yep. that up. They, speaking of blown away, they did get blown away by by <laughs> Auburn and their dog yeah. got run over. Oh yeah, it was just a bad Holy day. For man, insult to injury. Your dog taking gets run out over their the mascot, but boy didn't get hurt. Yeah, there's a bulldog. No, he didn't get hurt. Hit him in the side. He goes, "Grr, I'm fine." <laughs> That's my bulldog impression. Well, I I, I agree. I don't, can't remember who who tweeted this, but like he's got four handlers. Some you know, so he, this guy tweeted that one of the handlers needed to step in and do his job and take the hit. Take the hit. I mean, I wouldn't do it, but I'm saying if if one of the other handlers should have. Well, if that's part of handling a bulldog, I'm not doing it either. <laughs> I'm not taking a hit from an Auburn football player. Uh, K State. I, that one hurt, not just with the win-loss column. It was exactly what we've been talking about. You can go down there and lose, just don't get blown out. Now, I know it wasn't on a blowout on the score. It was only 13 points, Fitz. That was a blowout. That was humiliating. I'm worried about their psyche. They can say, oh, we got this. Skyler said all the right things. But, man, regrouping after that, you better respond like TCU responded to that SMU loss. Here's my biggest concern, mm-hmm. and I mentioned this after the Nichols game, is what happened to K-State up the middle of the defense. Yep. 
Yep, I agree. Because Nichols had some success with the middle of the D-line. Oklahoma State obviously had a whole bunch of success. Well, Chuba Hubbard only had 296 <laughs> yards. Yeah, I needed 25 carries. Come on. Yeah. yeah I mean, barely double-digit average. I know. It was 11.8 to carry. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, it's it's troubling, and it's something we've seen, but they didn't have – there was no NFL backs. I mean, well, Hill probably is at Mississippi State, but – they did a better job with him. I think Oklahoma State schemed K State just right, and there was enough blown fits that he got through that first line, and there was no one. Or if there was someone, they weren't going to take down an NFL back in the open field by themselves. I mean, plus Denzel Goolsby's heart. He, he's, I, was that's about a, to, I was about to say the same yeah. thing. Not, not the best run supporter. <laughs> Man. Yeah. He's no Marcus Watts. Let me just say that. Come up and whack a guy. I'm worried about the linebackers. They got schemed. Mm-hmm. Man, they got moved around. They got pulled out. And uh, this is the first game I was like, oh, Justin Hughes, where are you? You know, it's injuries. They He's just standing by me. Anything. God help him. God mm. help him. How well, was he on the sideline? Yeah, what did the sideline look like to you, Matt? You're right there. Nobody lost their minds. There, were, there wasn't yelling and screaming. Um, you know, I was thinking about this earlier after we got started. Uh, to Skyler's credit, I just, again, that's why I said I think he put too much pressure on himself. He didn't lose his mind during the game. You could see the frustrating. I mean, it was oozing out of his, his eyes, but – you know, he didn't blow up at any of the receivers or the linemen or running. I mean, he just – I think he kind of wore it. He put too much on his shoulders, and he wore it. And I would expect him to be a, a different quarterback this week. Guys, let me ask this. I'm sorry if I'm asking too many questions, Fitz. No. Is there, is there any chance that we come back here in two, three weeks, whatever, and they've won both these games where it's like, you know what? K-State's just not going to face a quarterback like Spencer Sanders every week, and they're not going to face a running back like Chuba Hubbard every week, and they're not going to face a receiver like Tylen Wallace every week. And that maybe – that's the thing here, at least from the defensive perspective. I mean, the, the stuff about the receivers that we've talked about, that, that's another thing. But, hey, I'm going on the record right now. They're going to win the next two games. They're going to they're gonna win the next two games. They're going to beat Baylor, gonna hand them their first loss, and they're going to beat TCU. I, I, would, I would not be surprised by it. Then they're going to run into Oklahoma. That does well, have players a lot yeah, like Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah, and, and then well, we'll be back in here talking exactly like yeah, <laughs> and, and, hey, talking about wearing it, I'll wear it both weeks if they lose. I'll come but on here and say it. That's a valid point. In this conference this year, I think we're looking at Oklahoma way up there. Yeah. And then Texas and Oklahoma State, based on what we've now seen the last two weeks, yeah. kind of nestled in between. And then – it's just a party in the middle, yeah. uh, and maybe about three teams battling to stay out of last. Because I don't think KU is as bad as they showed up on no. on Saturday, and I don't think Tech and West Virginia are very good. And I think the rest of the teams, what's that leave me, four teams? God, math. Right in the middle, I think. And we're going to start getting into that round-robin play a little bit. TCU's going to Iowa State. Baylor's coming to K-State. It's We're going to start sorting this middle out. As Chris Clement said last week, this is what, on our side, this is what we do. K-State's got five home games. Yep. Oklahoma, a real long shot. You win the other four, and then you win either in Lawrence and or in Lubbock. You're eight and four, seven and five, and you're going to a yeah. decent bowl. Take care of your home games that you gotta, can manage. Got to win four out of five at home. And, and I, I think you made a great point, Fitz, because I, I feel like you know you go back and watch the Texas Oklahoma State game. I think they play ten times. They split all, like five piece. That's how even I think those two teams are. I agree. In my opinion. I I looking back, I think now that Texas is pretty good. Oklahoma State played well enough to be in that game, but again, they had the mistakes that mm-hmm. really cost them, and they didn't convert. They've got a problem converting in the red zone. I mean, kicking four field goals against K-State worked, but that was really the one thing that stood out to me that K-State did exceptionally well. They held in the red zone. That was the ultimate bend, but don't break. They they bent all over the place, but they did hold them to f- four field goals and short field goals. I mean, none of them were over 30 yards. Well, whenever they got it to third or fourth down, they were great. It was the first two plays that killed them all night. Doubt. They actually were good at third down again. What was it, 4 or 13 or something? Yeah. Oh, and one. Fourth, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, so there are some things you can take away, but, boy, uh, they got some flaws exposed, and we'll get into more of that as we continue on the Powercat Insiders podcast brought to you by Commerce Bank. Stay locked in. The Powercat podcast will be right back. Listen.
Listen up. I won't sugarcoat it. This is the longest cold flu and allergy season we've ever seen, but we're not alone. We've got Instacart. Sure, you may be a coughing snot faucet who just wants mommy, but you're not giving up. Not when cold medicine, fragrant herbal teas, and honey shaped like bears can be delivered through Instacart in as fast as 30 minutes. Now let's go win the sick playoffs. Daddy, I just want my soup. Oh, sorry, Sport App says it'll be here in, in a few minutes. Hm, Instacart for the win. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562 314 4603 for complete details. We now send it back to Fitz in the WTC gig powered studios. Welcome back to the PowerCat Insiders podcast sponsored by Commerce Bank as we review Kansas State's 26 to 13 loss to Oklahoma State and we probably have about as half as many downloads as we've had in the past. Guys, this has been going really well. People seem to like us. Wow. I would think uh downloads would spike this week without Riley. Uh, right? I know. Yeah, that's a good point. I know. They really spiked 2 weeks ago without Ryan. That was our <sighs> biggest download. <laughs> And then, you know, I, I thought maybe, I don't know, we were going to be okay without Matt, but we went down. I think people like Matt, and I don't know why. I think it's the read-throughs. They just knew they were getting the professional read-throughs. I thought then... last week's reads were amazing. <laughs> we can make them better. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, professional. Our podcast brought to you by Commerce Bank with the technology and the people to help with whatever financial challenges Come your way. Commerce Bank. Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. I love that. Matt Walters. How about Baylor leading 20 to nothing and barely <laughs> winning against Iowa State? You know, guys, I miss going on the road. Um, That's how it's spelled out in the paper, by the way. That'd be a hammer. Bear, B-E-A-R. I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm, I'll just. I should okay. leave after we'll that. Read no. your articles all week to make sure you spell <laughs> it properly. Uh, I get to watch games like that by being at home, and I got to watch that basically wire to wire. <clears throat> and it was they looked dysfunctional in the first half, both teams, and then Baylor kind of woke up and looked good, and and finally Iowa State figured out, oh, they're overplaying everything. Let's run some wheel routes and throw back on the backside of the defense, and sure enough, it started working. And it opened everything back up. And Baylor actually hit a field goal to win. That Iowa State team is not going to live up to that preseason pick of third. They looked bad. They looked bad. K-State looked bad. Baylor looked bad. TCU you, looked bad two weeks ago. Did you see Matt Rule's outfit, though? I couldn't take my eyes off it. I don't remember that. It looked yeah. like it was a dry fit T-shirt mm, with a dry fit sleeveless windbreaker on top of mm. it. But the sleeveless dry fit windbreaker had a cloth hoodie attached. And the shirt was white, so it was very odd. The shirt was white, the thing he was wearing on top was gray, and then the hood was green. And I, for the life of me, could not figure out if it was one item, two items, three clothing items. I'm going to guess I'm still three. perplexed. Let's get into a serious topic here. At what age does the unnecessary hoodie become a distraction from your manhood? Now, well, look, hoodies well, have a purpose. If you're generally cold, you want that hoodie. But if it's not genuinely cold and you're, you know— you're just hanging out on a 100-degree sideline. Hoodie seems not needed and, for lack of a better word, douchey. Well, whatever age Matt Rule is, that's where the, the line is. Cause I was, <laughs> it's one month I, below I, that. I, it was distracting. I could hardly focus on the game. I just wanted to know what in the world he was wearing. Got him a new contract. Yeah. I mean, well, hey, give me one. <laughs> See, when I saw that, I felt like Yo. the – When I saw that, I felt like the inspiration for it was, okay – Take, like, the Belichick homeless look, but class it up a bit. Nice. Nice. Uh, like, if you were a homeless person that had some money and said, I want to get more like than the, just... the Gucci version of Yes, that, uh, of, of the hoodie Belichick. that he... That's yes. like it was a Gucci version. Yeah. yeah. Like, in case you had to go to, you know, Baptist service after the game. There you go. At least you're semi-appropriately dressed. Yeah. Uh, short of Oklahoma, Matt, this conference kind of stinks, doesn't it? Maybe Texas is okay. But as we sit here right now... I'm not sure Oklahoma's going to get enough quality wins to get into the playoff. Now, a lot of teams are going to start knocking each other off, but they're at six, and they probably belong at six right now. I think there are three teams with Oklahoma being out in front. 
You never know with Texas and Oklahoma. Someone knocks them off. I, Oklahoma's in huge trouble. I, I think Oklahoma's the best team, and then you've got Texas and Oklahoma State, and then I think there's mm-hmm. a couple of mile markers between those those two and everybody else. But as we learned from Clemson on Saturday, you can roll yeah. into North Carolina that was coming off a home loss to a FCS team, and or, or no oh, Appalachian State. No hey, Appalachian State's on. moved up now. Recently, right. they are Recently. in the Sun Belt. I, I apologize to the other former Mountaineers. I yeah. screwed they up. One of Michigan not long ago. Yeah, that where they were FCS. Well, right. Oh six. Is it so long ago? Do you know? How, well, you know, I'm not going to tell you why I remember it so well. It's because I was 12? having to. Uh, so you are going to tell us. Well, I mean, I guess I brought it up now. So I, I, I got my first speeding ticket, and I had to go just do this uh, half the day at this driving school thing. And For so one speeding ticket? It, How fast were you going? I was going fast enough that I should have had my license suspended, but they said if I would go to this class, I would be able to keep it. Were you driving Matt Walters back from Stillwater after the game? <laughs> Point How was, much over the speed limit were you? Wow. 40, 45? Oh, no, it was, 100? It, it, it was 24. What? They threatened to take your license for that? Well, it was because I was 18 at the time. And in Georgia, if you get any ticket above like 20 miles per hour, they're supposed to suspend it for six months. Well, Georgia Why am I telling all this rules. stuff on this podcast? I don't know. Can but we that, edit all this stuff out? No, it's staying in. This is the best part about uh, this so, podcast. Th- but so the point is, so it was an all. It was like a thing I had to get there at 7 o'clock. And I don't think it ended until 3, but they let you go to lunch. And so I went to a Burger King. And while I was there, I saw the end of the Michigan game. Cause they had, you guys know how like ESPN News would always do that live cut in? And, like, and I saw... Saw them block the field goal. You got to find the driver's ed school that just you pay them a little extra and they just give you the certificate. Yeah, I've I've never I didn't find that. And, and bless Kansas for not having those stupid things. I you know. get a speeding ticket and it's just like, eh, whatever. So yeah, you, it was 06, needless to Could you just hold a boiled peanut fundraiser and sell a bunch of boiled <laughs> yeah. peanuts for the cops and call it good? Well, I, I, I mean, I, I'm so glad that you brought up. I mean, I am disappointed they didn't have boiled peanuts in the press box at Mississippi State. That would have been a nice I'm homecoming sorry. gift. Yeah, that would have been Those are gross. That's oh, man. Exactly. I'm sorry, guys. You, you've had them? You don't like them? They're That's gross. Really? Caviar of the South. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Anyhow, speaking of gross things, back to the K-State game. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh... I don't think this will continue. I, I, Maybe this is the optimist in me, but I think Courtney Messingham and the offensive staff are going to go in and say, well, that, was a, that plan didn't work at all. Uh, let's, let's get a little more creative and do some different things. Because, Kellis, I thought they tried some different stuff at Oklahoma State. I thought the blocking schemes were more zone and a little bit different, less pulling, less razzle-dazzle, and it blew up in their face. Yeah, the other two things I thought that hurt, you remember in the first half where on back-to-back drives they – Picked up nine yards on their first play, mm-hmm. and, and then had to punt. They punted both times, right? Or no, they punted once and got stuffed on fourth down the other. I think impressive. And yeah, it's hard to gain nine yards on down one and not move the chains at all on back-to-back drives. So which was rare if, because K-State was not good on first down most of the night. Uh, yeah, weird. So I don't know what was going on there. I don't know if that kind of messed with what they were trying to do. But they did get creative. I mean, they tried stuff with Holcomb. I was a little surprised they went that far to the other end of the spectrum, but it just didn't work. So, yeah, I'm very interested to see the reset here because I, I do think, like Matt had said earlier, we'll see page two in the playbook against Baylor. I think they'll be I thought there. we were going to see it this week. Is it possible they were a little bit too overconfident with Oklahoma State? Because, honestly, looking at Oklahoma State, their first three games, four games, they were what they were, really talented in three spots on offense – okay offensive line and a front end of the defense that you should be able to run all day on. It just seemed like a okay formula to quote out, score your opponent and get a win. I'm I'm going to respond to that with a question. Who would Oklahoma State played? Who had they played? Yeah. They hadn't played anyone. Exactly. So I think they decided to show up and again they they've got dudes that K State doesn't and I got dudes. And to me, I, I don't know if I, I would say I'm looking at this differently, but you know, I didn't, I did not expect K State to go in and play a perfect game and score 49 points and walk out with a win and do all of those things. Uh, I thought it was, I think you said it was going to be a two point game. I thought it was going to be a one point game, um, but it, with what K State is right now, we're just four games into the climate administration. You're going to have some of those, yeah, and. For the most part, when you look at the next month, which all three games are at home, plus the bye week mixed in, I'm I'm like Ryan. 
I'm pretty confident in saying I think K-State's going to beat Baylor and then beat TCU. Oklahoma's a whole different enchilada. That's why I'm just – right now, four games in, you win four out of five at home, and you win in Lawrence and or you win in Lubbock. It's okay. Oklahoma's not an enchilada. They're the full Mexican buffet. They are going to bring it. But I don't – I want to see if Oklahoma, you know, I'd like to look two months down the road. Is the Oklahoma of 2019 as good as the Oklahoma that we've seen in the last four or five years? And I don't think we know that yet. Either. Yeah, we don't know. I, think I don't think pretty good. They're pretty good. I mean, they're the best team in this league. Is C.D. Lamb better than Hollywood Brown? He could be. He, Is Trey Sermon better than what they've had at running back? Could be. <laughs> Is Jalen Hurts going to win the Heisman and OU for a third straight year? Incredible to say this, but could be. Could be. <laughs> unbelievable. He's been unbelievable. And the biggest thing to me about Oklahoma to watch, not just this Saturday, or is their defense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is where if Oklahoma's going to get into the playoff, they're going to score. Mm-hmm. But are they going to be able to stop anybody? Their defense, I think, is better than it has been in probably a decade. And there really doesn't seem to be the offenses right now in this conference to – to test them the way they, the offenses had in the past. I mean, Oklahoma in the past had to roll into, you know, maybe Lubbock or Waco and have a really advanced, challenging offense that they had to literally outscore. They just had to put up 60, 70 points to win those games, and they were capable of it. But I don't know, you know, a lot of talk about this conference has come back to center with running backs and running games, and that's great. And I think it's a good path for K-State, but I don't know if that's a winning path to get through this conference right now with the way Oklahoma is. All that made sense. I don't know if you can beat Oklahoma. Texas and Oklahoma State right now are the only two that have the weapons to beat Oklahoma. I would agree. Is Oklahoma State, Oklahoma in Stillwater? I can't remember oh. that. I should have looked at um, it before we came This on. year, I believe it is. Yeah. I that's That's going to be interesting for me. Because of one reason, and they've got great quarterback and an incredible receiver, but Chuba Hubbard Hubbard is the real deal. I mean, he is a play on Saturday, first round type of guy. He's played five games and he's just that much under a thousand yards. He was the backup for most of last season. Yeah. He was the backup for most of mm-hmm. last season. That's what they had sitting on their bench. And yet, Oklahoma State isn't a dominant Big 12 power. I, I can't make sense of it. Charlie Dickey, though, hats off to him. That dude did a great job putting together Oklahoma State's offensive line after losing a couple guys. It was incredible. Yeah, all, yeah both their starting tackles. How do you do that? Well, there was some holding going on. I'll give them that. <laughs> but that they were just doing what they needed to do to get through the game. And if they're not called, they're just not holding. That kid that was the left tackle... Who made his first start? Mm-hmm. Seventy-seven. I'm sorry, I can't think of his name right now. Six seven three thirty. Mm-hmm. He reminded me the most impressive lineman I've ever seen in the Big Twelve was Phil Lodeholt from Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Most just imposing yeah. dude. That kid. I think he's a registered freshman. He's from Bixby, Oklahoma. He. Uh, wow. That kid was off the charts, just size wise. I mean, he's a registered freshman. He'll he'll get better, but. Maybe they just got their depth chart backwards. Maybe that's their problem. Yeah, maybe they discovered some things about themselves. They've been playing the wrong guys. It was intriguing. Yeah, I was really impressed with Oklahoma State. I wasn't impressed with K-State. And we'll see if that continues. I have one last question. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. How did your message board respond to this? Were they they saying they're canceling the college football playoff, like, trip packages or were they jumping off bridges here in town or yeah you know it wasn't that bad good we I mean, you a, always want to hear realistic stuff it shouldn't a, have been we've got a fairly rational group on our message board that's good um you know of course there's some people but that brings me to this last topic oh man espn plus oh. offered a great excuse to <laughs> vent at something other uh. than your team because fans get frustrated i get it and they want to vent so you know they might say some things they later regret about their own team but espn plus afforded them an opportunity to crap on something else because guys it was bad it was bad and i i sat in here Kelsey, you've done the same 
hey, folks, it's going to be fine. ESPN Plus is great. It's fine. And it has been. Every game I've watched has been well-produced, no problems, sounded like professional announcers. Were the announcers in Stillwater? Yes. Yes. How the hell did they miss the start of the game after the rain delay? Because they can say all the excuses they want. They just weren't ready. I don't get it. And the announcers are bad. They were just bad. Well, it's. I'm actually writing a story about this tomorrow. I talked to Bob Bowles Good. about it. And what's funny is that they actually, so for most of their lower level games, you know, they're just letting the schools produce it themselves and they've had better quality there. But for football, they wanted to make sure everything was right. So they said, ESPN, why don't you just do it like a normal game? We'll trust you to do it. And basically, that's where the screw ups happen. Whatever team they put on this uh, this week just blew it, basically. It was bad, and I, it's I interesting. That- I've I've never I've watched lots of like MLS soccer games on ESPN Plus. I've watched KU games on ESPN yep. Plus. I've never had the issues that people were describing in this. Never once have I seen the feed just go out. It's I believe there was equipment odd. that was missing. They didn't bring the right toys. That sounds like some insider knowledge from being on the sideline. Well, what 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 was it? They. There was equipment that should have been there that was not there. Mm. Huh. Well, that's the great. Plot well, and it was weird, thickens. too, because in the press box, they had TVs plugged into the feed. It said ESPN Plus on them, and they were crystal clear the whole way. No outages, no nothing. But it was I, apparently people watching from afar could had worse problems. I well, I know. had no real problems, and I don't have the best Internet uh, in my older neighborhood in Manhattan. I had no problems with the actual feed and i i get that there's some rural people that just simply can't stream at a fast enough rate something case it's got to be worried about but um it's time their providers catch up that's ridiculous i i didn't think it was well produced i thought the color guy is awful i've seen him do other games he's just really bad um got a lot of young former players. Well, Travis Tannehill's here, here in the office working on some stuff. You got guys like that all over the country from every program, and you keep recycling this guy. I don't quite get it. But Do you know his name when you're calling him out? Or you don't I can't remember his name. You're saying he's so bad he's forgettable. He didn't even remember his name. Well, you remember his voice. There you go. Well, Mark, Mark Neely did play-by-play, play, and he does a lot during the Big 12 basketball season. Yeah, I recognize his but name. But I, I can't tell you who did. Matt, you might know this, and I meant to text Kenny Lanou at K-State about this. But when we get into basketball season and K-State is streaming that non-conference home schedule that used to be on Fox Sports Net, that will still be K-State, Stan, and and Ben Boyle. On TV, yeah. Yeah, okay. Because that's when I do radio. Right. Because there's a lot of people out there that are canceling their ESPN Plus subscriptions out of anger. One, there's no guarantee this is the last football game on ESPN Plus, I think. You probably, I feel safe in saying there will be another game on ESPN Plus, and it might be K State KU. Could very well happen. But I mean, thirty thousand K Staters will be in Lawrence. Um, but there are fifteen, sixteen basketball games on ESPN Plus. So your protest is only hurting yourself. Fair take. Well, I don't know what the alternative is. That's right. what I guess I just don't understand with all the outrage. I mean, you can certainly, you know, ask for better, but people saying, like, the Big 12 just needs to dump this. That ship's left. That That's not going to happen. No, it's, no. It, it's and and you, can, you can't really cancel it because, like you said, if you want to watch the Hoops games, I mean, Here's my, I, I guess the only thing you could do is you could, well, I don't want to tell people how to steal, so I won't say it. <laughs> there, <laughs> but there, there, are many, there are many ways on the Internet to uh, – Watch things without paying. I guess if you're really mad, that's a good way to get around it. But don't complain about your stream on that because that's that's going to be even more sketchy possibly. But um, I am a proponent of streaming. I think the Big 12 is ahead of the curve. I think this is where it's going. And the fact that they're on the edge of that was made me feel optimistic about Big 12. I'm disappointed at ESPN that – they even talked about this game on College Game Day. If you want to see it, it's on ESPN Plus. You have to stream it. That's that was at least they mentioned it. So I was thinking, okay, they're going to value this. This has been my thing. They're they're treating this like an equal partner to the rest of their broadcast entities. The only ones that picked K State were Gabrielle Union and D Wade. They're beautiful people. They were bad at picking on that. Uh, and then, well, I then it was just shoddy. Too, so. Yeah, I did too. Well, I thought they would. <laughs> and unfortunately, I think they thought they would. 
Isn't it weird that um, – so we saw Mississippi State beat Bill Snyder's team like a drum, and then Chris Kleiman turn around and win on the road. And then we saw Bill Snyder's team beat Mike Gundy like a drum last year and then turn around and this yeah. team got whooped the same way. A lot of similarities between that Oklahoma State game here in Manhattan last year and how the Cowboys played because they kind of laid down. I thought they were awful. And then they rallied and looked better for the rest of the season. Yeah, I think I mentioned that last week that I feel like last year that game here against Oklahoma State was K-State's best defensive performance outside of the Texas Tech game. Yeah. I mean, they beat Oklahoma State 31-12. They headed into the bye week. Dalton Reisner gave his, we're going to go to a bowl and finish with however many wins that he would give every week. And yeah, the uh, first of many speeches. <laughs> He's no Jacob Pullen. <laughs> and then, uh, and then the, the 21-6 game against, against uh, Texas Tech, you know, where they held him out of the end zone. Well, I since the team's going to be fine, I'm looking forward to this week in press conferences. Speaking of equipment that wasn't there. Oh, man. Texas Tech forgetting – not bringing their winterized gear. Oh, yeah, that was bad. I missed that. Yeah. Yeah, last year they didn't bring heaters or anything. Oh, nothing. that's right. No coats, no nothing. Ooh, what? They didn't even have your hoodie. <laughs> that. Uh, oh yeah, the Gucci right. hoodie. <laughs> or their starting quarterback. Yeah, uh, yeah, Bowman was, was hurt and still is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that guy just cannot stay healthy. Well, it's going to be very interesting for Kansas State and most of the Big 12 Conference this year. Can I say one last Absolutely, thing? Absolutely, I'll be done. No, you're good. Be glad you're not Rutgers. Oh, yeah. Well, they're about to get Shiano back. <laughs> Chris Ash was 3-26 and 26 as the head coach at Rutgers in the Big Ten. Oh, yeah. It's be glad like eight, you're, eight and thirty-two and overall. Be glad overall you're not record. Rutgers. And got blown out once at Kansas. So yeah. the Big Ten added Rutgers, Maryland last time around, mm-hmm. and those two teams last week got beat by a combined one hundred and ten plus to zero. Yeah, I think it was one eleven because it was fifty-two and fifty-nine. Yeah. It was a fifty-two zero. Yeah, you know. that is one eleven. The last. Thank yeah, you. No, nobody will care. I was going to drop a Penn State Maryland nugget on you, but nobody will. Care. I want that nugget. The last three times those schools have met, the the score has been a hundred and sixty three to six. <laughs> and they left their students out of class for that. Yeah, they had no classes on Friday, so they could go watch that game. <laughs> wow, really? Yeah, mm-hmm. they did. Yeah, and then they got shut out at home and humiliated. Well, at least you're not in Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. So you two are both on the record. You're picking K-State in the next two. I, I, well, let me, I am. Let me get to the I'm Baylor a, game. I will reiterate, I'm picking them in both the next two games. Ryan Black, I'm thinking, email me. I'm thinking more of a split myself. Okay. You're saying Alex Delton can come in here and, and win against his former Oh, I think Max Duggan could. I'm not impressed with TCU. I think KU is um, schizophrenic. Yeah, they're, they, they're a very flawed team that can play a lot better than they have in the past. But I think the Khalil Herbert yeah. news shook them. Like, he goes on the trip and then says, I'm out. Very strange. Yeah. I'd take him. It's a great teammate. Yeah. <laughs> really, team, team first <laughs> philosophy there. But, and you know, it's a business for him. He wants to be in the NFL. I think he's capable of it, but he's not going to do it being Puka Williams back up at Kansas. I think they brought him to media days, too, right? He's one of the representatives. Hmm. Probably. Yeah. So what So what are we thinking is going on there, that he's going to transfer? I'm gonna gra- red, he, red he's played four transfer. games. He's going to use the red shirt and grad transfer. That's what it sounds like is going on. Business decision. Like you said, that's... Yeah. I think he's really good. Cold-blooded. But well, not yeah. well handled. How are they going to treat that on miles to go? Oh, I don't even think they'll show the game. <laughs> They're just going to gonna skip that on. episode. Yeah. Here's Miles hanging out with his wife. <laughs> <laughs> this week on Miles to Go, the team swings by Whataburger and Fort Worth. <laughs> Torchies, tacos. The, uh, the funniest part of the last episode, uh, I, I actually watched all of it, but when that parchment, their receiver, was bragging about how he was going to be Big 12 Newcomer of the Year. And someone was like, yeah, all you got to do is beat Jalen Hurts. Oh. And he was like, oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot. <laughs> he knew the dream was over right Just uh, a yeah. small detail. Well, unfortunately, Kansas State doesn't have guys like Alabama laying around like Jalen Hurts. Oh, we don't need him. You can have him. We're fine. 
the disparity in college football is troubling. And if California gets its way, everyone will be able to pay players via false endorsements and things. And it'll only get worse. It's a great world we live in. Anyhow, be depressed. That's the end of the Insiders. Thanks for listening to the Powercat Insiders. Sponsored by Commerce Bank. We'll be back next week following K-State's victory, according to Ryan Black and myself, over the Baylor Bears. Make the bear claw now. Roar. You've been listening to the Powercat Insiders podcast, presented by Commerce Bank. Powercat podcast. All rights reserved. GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street Publishing. Sunday, the NFL Divisional Round, presented by Intuit TurboTax, concludes with the next chapter in one of football's epic rivalries. Patrick Mahomes makes his first playoff appearance on the road when he leads the Chiefs into Buffalo to face Josh Allen and the Bills. This is storybook! It all begins at 6 Eastern with the NFL Today. We can't wait for Sunday. The NFL playoffs are on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus.